Hey, it's Jared. In this video, we're going to look at dual SIM on the Pixel 7. If you have a Pixel 7 or Pixel 7 Pro, dual SIM is a great option for your device. That means that you could have two different numbers, even with two different carriers on your phone, which is great for somebody like me who lives in northwestern Montana. Often there are dead spots for certain carriers. If you have one carrier, like if you're Verizon only and you go into a dead zone, sometimes maybe T-Mobile would work or AT&T. And so having a secondary carrier as a backup is a great option. If you're used to having to carry two phones, you don't have to do that anymore because you can have two phone lines on your phone, even if they're from the same carrier, but having different carriers is definitely a plus as well. So let's look at adding a new SIM. So if you wanna set up dual SIM, you're gonna to go to your settings, go under network and internet, and you're gonna hit the plus icon next to SIMs. Or if that plus icon doesn't show up, just tap on SIMs, and hit add more. This option here is if you're gonna insert a physical SIM. Now you don't have to have a physical SIM, but this may be easier if you do. If your current line is an eSIM already and your carrier gives you a physical SIM, you could just pop that physical SIM in and it's gonna recognize it and walk you through the setup process. If it's a eSIM, so for example, with this phone, I had it set up first with Google Fi, and then I added Verizon as a second line utilizing an eSIM. And so what I had to do was click download a SIM instead, and then it kind of gives me some instructions here. I hit next, and then it checks network info. And it's basically looking to see if my phone has a connection, if it's already ready to be activated on another carrier. Now, the first several times I got this screen, I had to choose Verizon and then it wanted to scan a QR code, which I didn't have. And so I tried and tried and tried to get it to connect to Verizon, even though I knew that the phone's IMEI number was already active on that Verizon line. I waited a bit of time just in case it took a while for that to come over the air, because what it's doing when you tap on one of these is it's checking those networks via your Wi-Fi connection. So it's actually contacting those networks and saying, do you have a phone with this IMEI number on the other end ready to go? And if it can't find it, then it says confirm your network and then you scan a QR code to connect your phone to that network. So I ended up having to call Verizon and have them send me a QR code through email. They actually were able to do that. They emailed me a QR code that I was able to scan. And then once I scanned it and it spent some time connecting and activating, then I was on this screen where I could then activate the SIM. But it was a little bit of a trickier process. And for whatever reason, it was trickier than when I activated dual SIM on my Galaxy S23 Ultra. The Galaxy S23 Ultra did a better job of pulling in that data without having to scan QR codes and stuff like that. Of course, with Google Fi, if you're using Google Fi, Google Fi uses the Fi app. And so you install the Fi app and then you log in and it handles the activation process for you. All of the other carriers are gonna utilize that QR code type of method, except for Google Fi. So that's how you would activate a second SIM on your Pixel 7. So we're gonna look at how that works. So let's go ahead and unlock my phone. You can see up in the top left-hand corner here that I have two cell phone bars, which is something different. You don't typically see that on most phones, but two cell phone bars. And if I scroll down even further, you can see I've got Google Fi and Verizon there as well. And it shows me the signal strength for both of them. Now, if I go into settings and then click on network internet, you can see here that for calls and SMS, it says Google Fi preferred and then comma Verizon. So it's going to utilize Google Fi first and then Verizon as a secondary. And then under SIMs, if I tap on SIMs, I can see that I have two SIMs that are here and it shows me which one's the default and then it shows me which one's the backup. Based on which one you feel like you're gonna use more often, you would want that one to be your default. And so you can click on that and you can go down and make sure mobile data is turned on. And depending on you know if you have a Wi-Fi calling feature or something like that, you can enable that or even en enable older network connections like 2G and stuff like that. Under Verizon, it's gonna have very similar settings. Mobile data is turned off right now because I'm not using Verizon mobile data. I'm using Google Fi mobile data on this device. And then you can see as we scroll down, I have a, an option for Wi-Fi calling, which is off because Google Fi is my default. So I'd be using Wi-Fi calling with uh, Google Fi, not with Verizon. 
and then access for older networks and stuff like that down below. And I can turn these sims on and off as well. So if I just wanted Verizon to be disabled altogether, I could turn this sim off and essentially it's off. It's like having the phone shut off. It's not gonna utilize it at all. It's turning that modem off completely in your phone. And then I would just have the Google Fi left over. So two networks there. And of course I can add more networks, but you can only have two active simultaneously. Now on the Pixel 7 Pro, you can actually have two eSIMs. And so while this phone does have a physical SIM slot, I don't have a physical SIM in this phone. I have two eSIMs. So I've got Google Fi and Verizon eSIMs running in this phone at the same time. Now, if I wanna switch between whether one of these is primary versus the other, I can do that. And what's cool is it allows you to do that for calls and SMS. So perhaps you take more calls, maybe it's your business line and you take a lot of business line calls, but you text message more under your personal line, you can have those switched. Under calls, you can have it choose whether to prioritize one of those like Google Fi or Verizon, or to ask every single time when you go to make a call. So when you dial in a number and you hit the call button, it's gonna actually ask you which one do you wanna use? And we'll look at how easy that is anyways. And then same thing for SMS as well. Now, one other feature that's good to have turned on is since Google Fi is my primary, if I'm making a call or if I'm in a call, then my data isn't going to work very well. And so I can turn on data during calls, which allows Verizon's data to be utilized when I'm in a call on Google Fi, which is great. So if one line is tied up because of a phone call, I still have a data connection that I can use because I have a backup service in here, which is an awesome feature. So let's take a look at how this works. I'm gonna click on start a chat and get a text message pulled up. So I'm gonna go ahead and just type in a number. We will send a text to that number. And now I have a number selected up there in the two. So I typed in a phone number that was already in my contacts. And you can see down here, we have this little icon one or two, and you can see text Google Fi. So it's making sure that I know that I'm text messaging on the Google Fi line. If I don't wanna do that, I could just tap and choose Verizon, and now I'm on number two. So now I can text on the Verizon line. And if it was Google Fi, if I had two Google Fi lines or two Verizon lines or two AT&T lines, I can go in and rename these and the name would show up. I just chose to have the name by default, Verizon or Google Fi, not a problem. And I can send that text message by typing in a text message and hitting send, and it's gonna send out using that particular line, which is awesome. So that way I can text message regardless of what line I'm on, and all of those text messages are going to show up in my normal text messaging here. And you can see I've got personal and business, and I can also see what line those came in on because it's gonna show me these text messages came in on Verizon. So it's very easy to see that when I reply, they're utilizing the Verizon line. Now let's go ahead and make a phone call. I've got the phone app pulled up and I have a phone number entered. And because Google Fi is my preferred, if I hit call, it's gonna go ahead and call out and it's gonna say calling via Google Fi. And of course I am getting a phone call. I can hear my other phone vibrating off to the side. However, it's a little bit trickier to choose different phone lines because it doesn't have that little selector like with text messaging. And so if I go and I put in a phone number, there's nothing here telling me. It's, it's just gonna automatically use the number that I chose as the primary. And so if you are gonna be making calls often on both of these different lines, I highly recommend choosing the ask every time feature. And so now if we go in and we type in a phone number and we hit that call button, it's gonna ask. You can see it says choose SIM for this call and I can choose the SIM. It says remember this choice, SIM preferred is saved with your contacts. So this is where the phone starts to learn what phone number you're gonna use with certain contacts. So if I'm calling this contact and I wanna use the Google Fi line all the time, I choose remember this choice, I choose Google Fi and it's going to remember that next time. So when I go to make this call next time, we'll go ahead and hang up. And you can see here, Google Fi is showing up as uh, the preferred for that. And all I have to do is hit the 
phone button and it's going to call. It's not going to ask me again. And so the phone starts to remember. So I highly recommend using the choose option, choose which one. And as you manually assign which line to call out on, then you're going to have the phone remembering and you're not going to get that prompt every time. So I highly recommend that a much easier feature. You can also use that feature with the text messaging as well to learn based on your contacts, which line are you using? And then you're not going to have to use that little chip to choose back and forth between which line when you're sending out text messages. So I have to say, I really like the way that Android does dual SIM. I've used dual SIM on multiple different Android phones as well as iPhones. And I think Android makes it a little bit more obvious and a little bit easier to use dual SIM than an iPhone, even though iPhone does a pretty good job too. But I have to say, I like the way that it remembers, especially on the Pixel. I haven't seen that on other devices. On my Galaxy S23 Ultra, it doesn't really have that feature. I have to go into the contact and make sure that it's using that specific line. I love the feature of it automatically remembering which lines I'm using based on my contacts, like the iPhone does. The iPhone does that. So as far as dual SIM, it's a great option, whether you need expanded coverage in different areas and you have two different carriers like I do, or you just want to have two different lines from the same carrier coming into the phone. I really like Google Fi. I think Google Fi does a great job. And if you use Google Fi as a secondary line, Google Fi uses T-Mobile's towers, so you're getting T-Mobile's coverage with Google Fi, and Google Fi has an extremely cheap plan. Like if you're not gonna use data with Google Fi very much, then that plan is very cheap, like under $35, and you get access to data, and you just pay for the data as you use it. You get a phone number, you have a backup coverage. If you are using the Pixel phone and you have a Pixel watch, you can connect the LTE data to your Pixel watch at no extra charge. So that even knocks down the price. Like if you were using Verizon, you'd have to have a Verizon plan for the watch, which would cost 10 to $15 extra. Like having Google Fi as a secondary line on a phone is a great backup plan for having expanded coverage when maybe Verizon or AT&T doesn't have coverage there. And if you use a watch that has LTE like the Pixel Watch or you have a tablet that uses LTE for data, then utilizing that free connection is a great option with Google Fi. So let me know what your thoughts are down in the comment section below. Have you used dual SIM on the Google Pixel 7 yet or the Google Pixel 7 Pro? Let me know your thoughts and experiences down below, including what carriers you're using. I just like to hear that stuff and hear other people's experiences so that I can expand my knowledge based on my own personal experiences. Let's chat down there. If you have any questions about the Pixel, I've got some links to some cases that I use, some accessories that I use with my Pixel phone in the description if you wanted to check those out. But otherwise, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you back in another one soon. Take care.